Well, hey, welcome back. It's, uh, it's good to be back. Had two weeks off. Great vacation uh, with Heather and our kids just resting, unplugging, and recharging our battery to come back and do this. Today is a special day because we get to talk about fathers. So happy Father's Day to all of you who are plugging in and watching uh, online from all across the country. Grateful for you. Grateful for your support. Grateful that you're here. I think you're going to be thrilled with what um, God wants to share today. Four things that good fathers do. Four things that good fathers do. My name is Dusty. Um, I am the lead pastor of an amazing church in Fort Collins, Colorado called The Grove. And um, I believe that we exist for just a few reasons. Relationship with God and each other. Community with God and each other. So we can become better. So it's, it's essentially we value honor honesty and hospitality. We want to get real so we can get better, become better followers. And so today as we celebrate Father's Day, there could be some of us with dad issues. And there's probably some of us who have dads that have issues with us, right? And I want to let you know that good or bad, there is a big difference between your earthly father and your heavenly father, the one who created you and the one that brought you in to the world. And so uh, between the one who brought you into existence and the one who brought you here, right? And so the truth is our earthly fathers are temporary and they have limited perspective. And our Heavenly Father is eternal, and He sees everything. His perspective is unlimited. God loves you today. God sees you today. God's proud of you today. And He does call you a son or a daughter. So this just isn't about fathers in general. It is, it is who God's called fathers to be, but who God is Himself to you. And so today is going to be uh, super special just because we get to look at this. I've not done many topical sermons, and so this is one of the, one of the few. And when I came and, and sat down Monday, I, I put the bulk of this message together before we went on vacation. And then when I got uh, sat in my chair on Monday and was praying, um, all the work that I did before we left kind of got put on the back burner. And then Tuesday I was thinking, and, and Wednesday I sat down, and this is all brand new. Um, fresh, nothing that was prepared two weeks ago. This is actually uh, just finished on Thursday. And so, um, so about 22 hours. All right. So here we go. The past few weeks, what has been really special is life changes happening uh, here at the Grove. We have uh, had, had 19 people in the past six weeks make a decision to follow Jesus or rededicate their lives. So much good is happening because we're gathering and sharing the gospel. It's going forward. So to all of you who support uh, our ministry, thank you so much. We cannot do it without you. The gospel continues to go forward because of your faithfulness. And so I greatly appreciate it. All right. I hope you're ready. Let's pray before we begin. Father, thanks so much for the opportunity to share your word today. I ask you, Lord, that you would open hands and hearts and ears and minds, Lord, to see, understand, and know that you are God. Thank you, Lord, that lives are changed, that we leave better because we gather today. It's in your name we pray. Amen. And so four things good fathers do. Four things that good fathers do. If you're taking notes, you need to write that down. This just isn't for dads because these are also the four things that God does for you. So four things that good fathers do, four things that God does for you. And so he is your heavenly father. You're created in his image. He has a purpose for you. He calls you a son or a daughter today. And so the first thing, if you're taking notes, the first thing that good fathers do is they love. They love. Good fathers love. The Bible tells us the greatest we can do is love God with our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love God with everything we have and love our neighbor as we love ourselves. So then we walk in love. The scripture for a good father loves is found in 1 Peter 4, 8. Above everything, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. Good fathers love three ways. They love God, they love their wife, and they love their kids. And so how do we lead love? Real practical message today. It's so good. Love God with your whole heart. We love God with our heart, with our words and our actions, and we're going to let our family see it. We're going to be an example of what it means to have a relationship with God. We're going to show them what relationship with God looks like, how we pray, how we read, how we worship, how we reflect, how we sit, how we act. It's going to be a reflection of how we love God. So we love God with our whole heart. We love our wife without reservation, without reservation, just as Christ of the church, right? This is how we are called to love our wife. And so you can't do much more for your kids than to love your wife with your whole heart. I'll never forget when we first had kids. Oscar was just a few months old. He's our firstborn. We have five. And uh, I was kind of rocked because I thought uh, I want to be a good dad, but I also want to be a good husband. What order should I be then? And I was confused. And when I met with uh, one of my buddies who's a, who's a pastor, he just said, man, so the best thing you're ever going to be is a good husband. If you'll be a good husband, you're going to be a good dad. It's a byproduct. 
your kids are going to see how you treat your wife and they're going to treat her the same. And so then love your wife without reservation. If you're divorced, treat your children's mother with respect, right? With respect, even if it's not reciprocated, even if she does not give it back, never return disgrace with disgrace. That's not how God operates and that's not how we are either. And so the third thing that we do is we love our kids unconditionally. We love our kids unconditionally. Make sure that your children know that you love them no matter what. No matter what. Unconditional love does nothing to encourage negative, wrong, evil behavior, right? In fact, kids who are secure in their father's love tend to act out, disobey, and show out less because they know what a father's love is. And so then love your kids unconditionally. The fourth thing to um, the first point is this, be present. Be present. Quality time is good, but it, but it has nothing to do with quantity time. It has nothing to do with quantity time. Everyone has the same 24 hours available to them in a day, right? And you make time for what's important to you, so then make your time count. Listen. Have some empathy. Engage. Engage. Be present. And so then your action step for point one is very simple. Be present. Your action step to loving a good father loves. Your action step to loving is to be present physically, mentally, and emotionally. How a dad spends his time reveals what's important to him. Now, let me turn this. Same point. How God loves you. This is how God loves you. The, the scripture we used was 1 Peter 4, 8. Love covers everything. Jesus' blood covers every one of your sins. This has to be made personal. So we see it in John 3, 16, right? For God so loved the world. We say, oh, that's great, the world, but I'm in the world. And so Jesus died for me. God so loved the world that he gave his son, right? That he gave. And so then for God so loved you, the kid's version is amazing of John 3, 16. It says, God loved me so much he gave me Jesus. That's it. It's pretty plain and simple. You see Jesus, the Son of God, follow through with God's promise in John 3, 16, when he willingly walked into a beating, the beating of his life, right? The, the only beating of his life. Then he carried the cross that he would hang on uphill where he gave his life and that blood was shed so that you could be reestablished with the Father. So then love covers everything. That blood that covers you is love. And Jesus sees you through, or God sees you through his son's eyes because of the sacrifice that was made for you. And so what we see with a, a good father and a good father loves is this. A father's love is self-sacrificing. A father's love is without reservation. A father's love is unconditional. A father's love is always there, self-sacrificing. It's what God did for you. Without reservation, it's how you love your wife. Unconditional, it's how you love your kids. And always there, present in a time of need. A good father loves. That's point one. The second thing that a good father does is lead. A good father leads. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 11 that where there is no wise, intelligent guidance, the people fall off and go off course like a ship without a helm. But in the abundance of wise and godly leadership, there is victory. Leading as a father means correction. It means guidance. It means teaching. It means discipline, right? But it's more than that. It's also serving. Servant leadership is what a good father does. And if we want to see our kids win, then we serve and we follow Jesus' example. You know, Jesus told us in Matthew 20, verses 26 through 28, anyone wanting to be a leader among you must be your servant. And if you want to be right at the top, you must serve like you're at the bottom. Your attitude must be like mine. For I, Jesus, did not come to be served, but to serve and give my life as a ransom for everyone. And so then how we lead is very simple. One, men, grow up. To lead, you can't lead where you won't go. You can't lead what you won't do. And so then as men, we have to grow up. Even Jesus grew in wisdom and stature. You can't be selfish if you're going to lead. You have to grow up. Our kids don't want another buddy. They need a dad. They want a dad. They want someone that thinks things through. They want someone who makes tough decisions, who will help them make tough decisions, who they can learn from in those tough decisions. They want somebody who engages life with responsibility. They want somebody that they can count on, that's reliable, who lives what they teach, who does what they say. 
When we become dads, we really shelf ourselves to serve those that God has called us to lead. That's what servant leadership is. The second thing we do is discipline. So many people look at discipline as a negative thing. And, and however you approach that, God bless you, that's how you do it. But kids are likely, way likely, to appreciate consistent accountability and discipline. Because without clearly defined boundaries, it's very difficult to grow up. It just is. And dads who discipline in a calm and fair manner show love for their kids. Because as many of you know, it's easier to raise a kid than to fix an adult. The third thing that we do in leadership as fathers is we teach. We teach. Kids who learn how to duck out of responsibility and avoid the cost will sooner or later fall flat on their face. It's only a matter of time. Good dads make sure, they're, make sure their kids know how to, how to own up, clean up, and grow up. Good fathers make sure their kids know how to own up, clean up, and grow up. So then we, as men, to lead, we're going to grow up, we're going to discipline, and we're going to teach our action step then in leading, our action step of leading. A good father leads. Our action step to leading is be their role model. Be their role model. Be a role model. Be an example in word, deed, purity, and faith. Here's why. A girl who spends time with a loving dad grows up knowing how she needs to be treated, how she deserves to be treated. And she also, after spending time with her dad, knows how she should be treated and who she's looking for in a husband. A good dad teaches boys how to love and how to work. And he ultimately teaches all of his kids what's important in life by demonstrating it. Be their role model. Be their role model. Switching just a little bit. Here's how God leads you. Here's how God leads you. We start, first of all, in this, we have to be open to God's leadership. And we have to be willing to let him lead, which means open hands, which is really hard for some people. If you want to have a conversation on that, just email me. This takes relationship. If I'm going to be open and willing to let God lead me, I have to have a relationship which is built on love and trust. And so then understanding that Jesus came to serve, right? That's how you're connected to God the Father because he came and gave his life. Here's how God serves you. It's Proverbs 3, 5. If you want favor with God and man and a reputation for good judgment and common sense, then trust the Lord completely. Don't ever trust yourself in everything that you do. Put God first and he will direct you and crown your efforts with success. This is how he serves you when you trust him. Psalms 32, 8 says, I will instruct you. So then there's, an, there's a relationship established. David in Psalms comes in, in Psalms 32, verse 8 says, God says, I will instruct you, says the Lord, and guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and I will watch your progress. That advisement that we get is the Bible. We put the word in our heart and his spirit guides us. That's how God serves us. A good father leads first by serving. The third thing a good father does is believe. A good father believes. The Bible tells us that a good, that a good tree cannot produce bad fruit and that, a bad fr and that a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. Now, I know who my kids are. I know who my kids are because they come from me. God knows who you are because you came from him. So then I know the kind of fruit that my kids should produce. And I believe, I believe that it's in there only because I've loved them and led them to bear good fruit. You know the type of tree by the fruit it creates. But we all know that you can lead a horse to water, which doesn't necessarily mean they're going to drink, right? And so then how we believe in our kids is pretty simple. We believe, encourage, inspire, and motivate. Let me dive into those with you. How do we show our kids that we believe in them? We are the biggest and best voice that they hear. This is easy when you've loved and led well. Your voice matters. It carries weight. The sheep know the voice of the shepherd, right? And so then the first thing we do is believe. Good dads believe the best for the best in the best right now, right? The world can be discouraging can, and can beat your kids down. But as dads, as dads, our experience and our influence and our, and our faith helps our kids overcome. Overcome. There's so many times on social media that I use our, 
I have a hashtag for every one of our kids and OFAM Val and even for my wife Heather. And their hashtags are a way for me to show them that I believe in you. I believe in you. Oscar kicked a field goal one time. And again, it's just a way for when I'm gone, for them to go and search that hashtag and see, here are all the memories I have with dad and here's all the ways that he believed in me. That's one of the ways I do that with our kids. Number two, encourage, encourage. Good dads stand on the sidelines. We yell, we cheer, and we even get onto the officials, okay, if you ain't careful, right? We get to be the voice that reminds our kids, you got this. You got this. If we whispered the things that we yell with sincerity, that whisper would last forever. I love this with our kids at bedtimes. I'm always constantly coming in and encouraging, hey, you're a good one. You're a good son. You're a good daughter. You're a great leader. People like you. Who made you? God, how do you make you? Awesome. Um, God has great plans for you. Man, the things God's going to do through you. Constant, constant encouragement. Love the bedtime things with our kids. I was just thinking the other day, there's, there's a constant, hey, dad, even after you say goodnight. Hey, dad. I love those moments. They, at one point in my life, they used to wear me out. But now I love them. Hey, dad. Number three, inspire. Inspire. Good dads. Great dads, the things that good fathers do, good fathers want better for their kids than they want for themselves. They want their kids to go farther and do more. They want more for their kids coming up, right? And we want more for for them than we've ever had or that we ever achieved. And so we constantly want them to give their best and we push. And we ask challenging questions. By the way, inspire means in spirit, okay? Now, sometimes we push, we push too hard. And that is an error of love most of the time, right? Here's how I inspire my kids. We have sign language. A couple things, if I touch my heart, I can see them, I can see them 200 yards away. And if I touch my heart, this means I love you. We've had it from the time. You can quiz them wherever you want. I love you. Let's go. If I see them, I can't get to them. They can't hear that loud voice. Let's go. I'm proud of you. If I just point, that means I'm proud of you. If I give this, it's a good job. And Kaz helped me create another one. Think about it. Think about it. You're about to lose your temper. You're about to act a fool. Hey. Yeah, you're right. Think about it. Got that. And so this is how, uh, those are some of the ways that, that, um, that I or we inspire our kids. The fourth thing we can do is motivate our kids. And this is tough, right? This is tough because how do you motivate your kids? There's four things and four ways you do that. One, discover their passion, Right. One, God's placed gifts in you. He's placed gifts in them too. And so encourage your kids to figure it out, to find what they love and then let them try it and be patient and urge them to keep going until they find it. And when they find it, celebrate it and love them for it. Number two, set goals. Why? Because God has a purpose for you just like he has a purpose for them. And so then set goals. Have them make a list of short-term goals, of long-term goals. Make sure their goals are reachable. That's the best thing we can do as parents is make sure their goals are reachable but make sure they require some effort to obtain, right? And then, and then I'm constantly saying energy, effort, enthusiasm. It's the three E's. Man, when these things are present, success is found. Energy, effort, enthusiasm. Number three, make a plan. God has a plan for you. Let's help them make the plan, right? In order to reach your goals, you need to plan. Help your children create a strategy for reaching goals. If you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. Number four, get them excited. Get them excited. Get them excited. Excite your children about reaching goals. Tell them there's always something bigger in front of them. God has great things in store for you. It's biblical. Tell them. Tell them. The action step for believing in your kids. The action step to believing is this. Be a fan. Be a fan. There's two points to this. It's kind of sub points. Validate them. Validate them. There's something powerful about the words of affirmation from a dad. Man, when dad tells me it's the best, right? When you know you have your dad's confidence, you're more assuredly and you can more confidently go and face whatever the world brings at you because dad said, I got this, right? Validate them. Number two, celebrate them. When they accomplish a goal, let them know. Let them know you're proud of them. Let them know you're happy with them. Let them know you see them. Celebrate them. Celebrate the things together. And in some cases, bring reward for their hard work. The Bible says those who work hard will be leaders. Those who are lazy will become, those who are lazy will be worthless or become slaves. Celebrate their hard work, reward what they do. Now, here's how God believes in you. This is starting to come, come together, hit home for you. How God believes in you. John 14, 12. 
He believes you're going to be better than he was. Here's what scripture says. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, anyone who believes in me as savior will also do the things that I do and he will do even greater things than these in extent and outreach because I'm going to the father. He believes you'll be better than him. John 15, five through seven says he believes you'll produce. It says, yes, I'm the vine, you're the branch. Whoever lives in me and I in him shall produce a large crop of fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So without me, nothing happens. And if anyone separates from me, they wither like an old branch. But, but verse 7 says, if you stay connected and follow me, you can ask anything you like, and I'm going to do it for you. Because verse 8, my real disciples produce bountiful harvests that bring great joy to my father. God believes that you're going to produce a good father always believes in his kids. Now the final message, the fourth point today. A good father is pleased. The fourth point, the fourth thing a good father is, is pleased. A good father is pleased. You know, growing up, I always knew my dad was mad. I always knew when my dad was mad. I rarely knew when he was proud, and I never knew if he even liked me. <laughs> That's a generation of, of kind of that class of people that are ahead of me. And I think as dads, uh, what we do a good job of is letting our kids know if we're proud. I think that this, this round of dads, uh, our kids know when we're proud of them and our kids know when we are upset with them. But the other 98% of the time, when we're not proud and we're not unhappy or mad, the other 98% of the time, do our kids know that we're pleased with who they are? Do our kids know that we love who they are? Are we telling them, hey man, you're good, you are good, I love who you are, I love who you're becoming. Do we say that? Because the reality of what God wants in his relationship with you can really uh, be brought down to the baptism of Jesus. This is in Matthew verses 3:17, And what's happened is Jesus comes and he tells John the Baptist, hey, you need to baptize me. And John's like, you're Jesus? And he says, yeah, it, it's you and it's my time, let's go. And Jesus sets the example for us and shows us one that anybody can baptize, but two that he's going to be and lead the way in baptism for us. And so as he's baptized, uh, he gets pulled out of the water and a, club descend, and a cloud opens up and a dove descends and says a voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I love and with whom I am well pleased. And this is exactly how God identifies with you where you sit. Wherever you're sitting right now, whether it be in a bed, on a couch, in a car, it doesn't matter. How God identifies with you, he said, this is my son this is my daughter. This is my son, James, who I love and who I'm well pleased. This is my daughter, Becky, who I love and I'm well pleased. This is my son, John, who I love and I'm well pleased. This is my daughter, Stephanie, who I love and with whom I am well pleased. God identifies with you this way. You're a son and you're a daughter and God's pleased with you. So then it's not about what you do for him, it's who you are to him. You're a son or a daughter. God accepted you before you were born, right? So a couple things you need to see in God being pleased with you. Hebrews 11:6 six says, for that reason, God is not ashamed. God is not ashamed to be called your God. Psalm 68, five says, God is a father to the fatherless and a judge and protector of widows. God is your father. He knows you and he is pleased with you. So then the action step for the whole day. Let's recap this. Recap this. A good father is proud. A good father believes. A good father leads. And a good father loves. And the reality is this. When we lead, when we love, lead, and believe in our kids, it changes how we see them. And it changes the expectations we have for them. And we start to see them as a son or daughter. We see them as a gift from God, which is exactly how he sees you. Your gift. Your gift. So your action step today is this, it's very simple. One, realize how God sees you. Know that he loves you. Allow him to lead you. Believe that he believes in you and trust that he's pleased with you. Because a good father's love, this is just exactly how he opens, self-sacrificing, without reservation, unconditional, and always there. Father, thanks so much for being such a good dad, for loving us and leading us, for believing in us and being pleased with us along the way, Lord. 
It's never about what we do, but who we are to you, sons and daughters. Thanks for the men who we call Father today. I ask you to honor them, help them to feel celebrated and loved, Lord. I ask you to give, their, give, you, uh, give them your grace, Lord, and help them to walk forward in that. Help them take steps to be the men you've called them to be, the father that you've called them to be, and help them to be accountable, to love their wives with their whole heart, love their kids unconditionally, and do each without reservation, knowing that you've called them to lead. I love you. I thank you for an awesome day. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Now, today spoke to you. I would ask you that you send it along. Send, share, like, subscribe, whatever and wherever uh, platform you're uh, engaging on. Take those steps there. Man, more than anything, I think the, the best way and the biggest way this goes forward is when we share it. So if it spoke to you and you know somebody it would speak to, please send it on ahead to the next person. Uh, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for that. If you support the ministry that's happening here, thank you. I love you. I'm grateful for you. Many of you are friends, and uh, we can't do it without you. So, so thankful for your support. Let me pray a blessing over you. This is Ephesians 1, 17 and 18. It says this, I pray the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, would give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. I pray that the perception of your mind may be enlightened, the perception of your mind may be enlightened so you know the hope is calling for you and His purpose for you and the great things that He has in store for you. Thanks so much for being here today. You guys have a great week. See you.